Hey everyone, welcome back to Tammy Lee TV. Today I have a special treat for you. We are going to do a core training routine for road cyclists. Now, if you don't know who I am, I am an endurance coach and a CanFit Pro trainer. I've got 21 years experience in the industry and I feel very confident that what I am teaching you today will help you with road cycling, especially if you're struggling to find the time to do muscular strength and endurance work in the gym to help you on the bike. Because if you are like me, you love to ride your bicycle more than you like to spend time in the gym. And when it's road season, we tend to put road cycling, obviously, on the priority list. So we get outside as often as we can and we ride our bikes because we love it or we're racing or we're training to compete or whatever reason, whatever. It brings us joy and we wanna be there. So what I'm going to do to you today is teach you how to do a 30 minute routine that you can do twice a week and you can use it through your road cycling season. So this routine is going to include five different exercises. We are going to do bird dog, side planks, single leg, leg deadlifts, reverse lunge with the carry, and bent over rows. Some of those exercises to you may not seem like they're core exercises. You may be thinking, but those are leg exercises. Your core is not just your abs. <laughs> There are a hell of a lot more muscles than that. The reason why we do core training is to help stabilize our spine and support our spine. So we work all the little tiny muscles around the spine, deep layers, and it extends out from there to the superficial layers. So we have all kinds of muscles that we are working the whole way around our spine, but also in the pelvis region, in our shoulders. So we're also looking at chest and back. We look at glutes. We also have to consider hamstrings and hip flexors and your uh, quads, because all of this, including your head, we use that to help uh, train our Core. It's, it's all part of the package. So we need to look at all of those things as well. So this workout, it's going to be more of a full body workout by the time you're done. We just aren't going to be doing biceps and triceps and other things like that. Although they are used in the exercises we do, they're not trained directly. We need to focus on the core because that is the goal of today's workout. All right, so let's get started. We are gonna start with a warm up. So let's just begin with getting all the joints in our body from head to toe. Just move, move them, begin to warm them up, warm up the muscles and so forth. So let's just start with some arm circles. Now, while we are warming up, I'm going to take this time to explain to you how you can take this routine and advance it. First of all, we're going to do um, a number of reps and sets today for the workout but we're gonna start light. So we're gonna, in this workout today, we're gonna use light weights. Obviously, one way to advance this workout over the period throughout your cycling season is to progressively overload your weights in small increments each week or bi-weekly or whatever. Put our hands on our hips and do circles. That is one way you can advance. Another way you can advance is you can change your lever length. So for example, if we are doing a, uh, let's say we're doing a side plank, which we are doing side plank today, um, and you are doing it from your knees, which I will show you. Now let's go the other way, by the way. <laughs> you can increase that lever length by going from your toes. So that's another way. Another way is increasing your range of motion. So today, now you're gonna lift your legs up like this. Today, we are going to be doing the reverse lunge. So you can use a shorter range of motion to begin, especially if you have really tight hip flexors, but over time, you can increase that range of motion. So these are ways you increase your workout intensity without having to like actually increase like 
progressively lifting heavier, heavier, heavier weights all the time. There are other ways to increase your workout. Let's kick forward like this with the goal to stretch out the hamstrings. Oh, and if you haven't started your activity tracker, you probably should. <laughs> if you're tracking, I track mine on Garmin, Strava, and of course, Training Peaks. I'm a huge Training Peaks fan. I am Training Peaks accredited level one coach, and I have training plans on Training Peaks if you want to check them out. Okay, let's do some squats. Open the legs up and down. We're just looking to stretch out the body and <clears throat> get it warmed up. Another way you can increase your intensity of your workouts and progress without changing any of the exercises in this workout is changing your surface. So you can do some stuff on a stability ball. That's one way. You can use TRX, suspension systems. Awesome. Now, we are going to do a couple cat-cows. So standing cat-cows, put your hands on your knees and round your back and extend. Inhaling as you extend, exhale as you round. Wonderful. Now, let's slide those hands down our legs and get on the floor. And from here, we're just going to move our hips towards the ground and do a few circles. And the other direction. Awesome. Just lean back. Stretch out the upper body, wiggle around a little bit. You can feel that in your back, your shoulders, maybe your chest. Forward, let's do that again. Awesome. Okay, let's go up on our toes and then get into a nice deep squat. If you can't get into a deep squat like this, just stay on your hands and knees. And what you're going to do is put your one hand in the middle and I want you to reach up one side and then twist to the other side. You may notice your range of motion is better on one side than the other. Um, as a cyclist, I tend to look over my left shoulder, which makes me, because I'm looking over my left shoulder a lot, I have a lot more range on that left shoulder and my right is not as much range. But also at the same time, I have a bum shoulder over here on my right side so I can't reach up as high as I can on my left side. So it's something I'm working at. We all have imbalances, right? Okay, we are gonna stay on the ground. That's our warm up. So the first exercise we're gonna do is bird dog. Bird dog is one of the best core exercises. I like to spread my fingers, plant them into the ground, and corkscrew my arms into my hands into the floor. So I spiral my shoulders and set them in place because that's important. You want to have your shoulder blades set in place so you don't want to be sinking through like this. Set them in place and then have your knees hip width apart underneath your hips. So you should be nice and square to the ground. You're going to lift, uh, sorry, you're going to brace your core first. So if you're thinking of bracing, take a deep breath in, the whole way around, and squeeze out, think of all the muscles around the spine, hugging the spine to stabilize in a neutral position, okay? So don't lift up like this or anything like that, just stabilize in a neutral position. Stabilize neutral position, stabilize those shoulders, pelvis, all neutral, neutral because you don't wanna hyperextend and you don't wanna be rounded like this. So set your, your pelvis in a neutral position and then extend opposite arm, opposite leg, with a fist here and not too high in the back because if you go too high in the back, you're going to hyperextend your back. So you wanna keep your spine neutral while you do this exercise. So you should be nice and long without that bend or an arch in the back. So no flexion or extension in the spine. 
10 reps each side, three sets. Get ready, get set, here we go. One, two, three, keep your head in line with your spine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, switch to the other side, get ready, set, go, one, two, three, four, pay attention to your spine, five, six, hang into that brace, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay, take a little break, one set on each side, two more rounds. It's not overly challenging as in you're gonna get a sweat or a burn on, that's not the purpose. The purpose is to work to stabilize the spine and move your limbs without having that flexion or extension in the spine. You have to work really hard because that makes those little tiny muscles work harder around your spine to minimize that movement, bracing, okay. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch arms and legs. Set and go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, take a little break. You might that might have found that a little more challenging. Set two. That's that muscular endurance we're also working on for. So we want to get this, we want to get the spine, all the muscles in our core to be able to increase their endurance because as a road cyclist, we're on the bike for hours and hours and hours, and we have to hold our body in certain positions for hours and hours and hours. So we need to be able to build that in muscular endurance for those core muscles to be able to handle those positions and support our spine during that cycling. Okay, let's do one more set. Get ready. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, switch arms and legs, here we go, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, awesome, excellent. So we got three sets of 10 reps. To increase the exercise that we just did over time, you increase, you can increase your number of sets, you can increase your number of reps, you can increase the time under tension, so total duration, your holds, you can put pauses in there. All right, side plank. So this is what I was talking about with earlier about levers. So you can do a shorter lever side plank from your knees. So make sure your elbow is below your shoulder so you have that nice and stable. You can put your hand here for more support for the shoulder if you like, or I like to put my hand here and sometimes up here. Now, the, we call this a plank because you need to be straight like a plank. So make sure you're not kinked up like this. So my knees are here, my hips are back here, my shoulders up here, so now I'm more like this. You need to make sure you're nice and long so when you lift, you are straight down here and you're straight through the midline as well. So your hips aren't piped up, uh, piped up too high and they're not sagging either. You can do that from your knees or you can do it from your toes or your feet. 
you can place your top leg in front of your bottom leg like so again put your hand here if you like and then lift up and hold make sure your head isn't hanging off you keep that in line as well we're going to hold these for 10 seconds and we're going to do three on each side I will do a 10 second count, so <laughs> it's Tammy seconds. <laughs> so pick either from your knees or your toes and get ready, get set, let's go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch to the other side. This also works your. Um, glute meat and the muscles down on the outside of your leg and by the way a little tip when you're up here you can pretend you're trying to draw your elbow towards your feet together so you can get more of a stronger contraction in your obliques okay get ready get set here we go one two three four five six seven eight nine, ten. Back to the other side and I'll show you a way you can advance this. Now I'm going to stack my feet on top of each other and lift. So now I have a balance issue that I need or a balance challenge that I need to um, work at. Okay, get ready, get set. Here we go. Lift and hold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Remember, don't just hang out on your shoulder joint. Actively engage the muscles, squeeze the elbow, like draw the elbow and the feet together so you're trying to like shorten that distance, even though you're not going to, but you'll feel that contraction more. Okay, the other side, same thing. Get ready. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sweet. Okay. One more way I'm going to show you to advance this exercise. So you can stay on your knees, you can stay from your toes, you can do the stack like I just did, or you can try this one, which I'm going to lift the top leg away from the bottom leg and hold it. So get ready, get set, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> and the other side. Get ready, get set, let's do this. Up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sweet. Another way you can advance this exercise, of course, is by going longer holds. However, I'm not a big fan of doing these big long holds. I'm more of a fan of doing limited 10 seconds, 15 seconds maybe up to 30, um, depends on how advanced and how good condition you're in, um, and then doing more sets. So I like the 10 seconds holds repeated by more sets. So normally I would do six to 10 of these, depending on how far I am into my practice. Next up, we are gonna stand up. So you can use no weights for this, if you have never done a single leg deadlift before, I highly recommend no weights. If you are familiar with doing single leg deadlifts, then you can use some weights. So for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use a light weight. Plus, I haven't been doing these for a while, and uh, yeah, my always, I always struggle with balance. So brace your core the whole way around, okay? So you're hugging your spine, brace, you should feel good, and sturdy and stable in your neutral posture and you're going to hip hinge at your hip forward not in the back okay so you need to hip hinge in the hip what that looks like 
is as I hinge forward, my leg lifts behind. So see how my leg comes up as I hinge forward? And then I come back up like that. If you are going like this, hinging forward, and then your leg doesn't move anymore, and you're going like that, your back is gonna take the brunt of it. Now, we don't want that. We want your calves, your hamstrings, your glutes, your low back, your core, all of that, your shoulders, everything engaged in this exercise. If you drop that leg behind you, you're gonna lose a lot of it, and you're going to be um, rounding in the spine. So, let's hip hinge. <sighs> Brace yourself. Keep your weight somewhat in the front, okay? That back leg, as you hip hinge, is going to come off the ground. And we're gonna go slow for the first one. So we're going one, and then come back up, because you gotta concentrate. And then again, two, back up, keep going. Three, four, five, six. Don't allow those shoulders to pull or the weight set, that's seven. This is eight. Don't allow the weight to pull your shoulders forward. Whoa, come on Tammy, focus. Nine. Ten. You'll also feel this in your ankles. Switch legs. Ten reps each side. You really have to focus on your core and the hip hinge. Stabilize everything as you bend forward. All right, see? One. Oh, let's do that again. Two. You'll see why tomorrow, if you haven't done this before. Three. You don't want too much soreness. <laughs> That's why. Four. I suggested if you're a beginner to take a very light to no weight. Five, you're doing something different. Allow your body time to adjust. Six. Seven. Whoa. <laughs> Eight, wow. <laughs> Nine. Ten. Perfect, one more set on each leg. Let me know in the comments section below if you find those as ch challenging for balance. You can use dowels, I have them over there, or you can use the wall. If you're really wobbly, use support. Here we go. One, two, three, four, Five, this really works the hip stabilizers, as well as the core. Six, which is all part of the core, <laughs> technically. Seven, keep those, keep your back neutral while you're bending forward. Eight, don't allow the weights to pull your shoulders down. Nine, make sure you're coming up each time as well and 10. So you should be feeling this, if you're doing it right, in the whole back of your leg. So the whole way up in your glutes, and then of course your core is working really hard to keep your spine stable as you hip hinge forward. This is an excellent exercise for roadies. Um, we do a lot of single leg movement. If you have a leg 
that is weaker on the one side, this is a phenomenal exercise to help you correct those imbalances and develop more power in the weak leg. Okay, let's do the other side. Last set, 10 reps for this leg, and then we move on to the next exercise. One, two, this is my weaker leg. <laughs> Three, it's, I measured it, it's 2% less, which isn't that bad. Four, but if you're nerdy like I am, I want it to be balanced. Five, it's, and I know it's in my glute knee too, because I had it tested. Six, oh, whoa, 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 if you're doing number seven, you got it done, keep going. Seven, two more, or three more. Eight. If you're done before me, keep going. Nine. I prefer to work out in my bare feet, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. Ten. And the reason being, I've always done it. And you work more muscles. Think about it. The shoe acts like a casket. Take your foot out of the shoe, use more muscles. We have one more or two more important exercises. The next is gonna be the re reverse lunge. You'll probably want heavier weights for this exercise. We are going to hold the weight and step back as far as you can go. Um, and I mean, dip your knee as far, like if you can get it to the ground, great. If you can't, don't worry about it, it'll come with time. And then bring your feet back together. We're gonna alternate legs. So we do one side, and then we do the other side. The important thing here is to keep your spine in a vertical position. So when you go forward, you don't dip like this, okay? You're gonna keep your spine in a vertical position, step back and step back, okay? We are going to do eight per side. That gives us a set of 16. Get ready, brace your core, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and rest. If that's your first, uh, with your first set, you can always tell if your weights are too heavy because you're struggling to get it done. If they're too light, you're not feeling like you did anything. Okay, we have two more sets. Lift your weights. Brace. Let's go. One, it doesn't matter what leg you start with. Two, because you're doing, each leg is getting a turn. <laughs> Three, an equal turn. Four, five, try not to let that knee in front. Six, go over your toes. So make sure you're stepping back far enough. Seven. Eight. I probably should have told you that on the first set. What I mean, this is what happens, take a break. What I mean is people go like this. They don't step back far enough. So you need to step back, that you have 90 degree, 90 degree, okay? If you're really struggling with range of motion, 
You can also use benches or blocks. So you put your foot up and then you can do a static. So like this instead. Okay, grab your weights, nice and strong. Brace core, let's do this. Focus always. One, make every rep count. Two, otherwise you're not getting the most out of your time spent. Three, and if you're serious about your cycling, that's four, you are only gonna spend, that's five, 30 minutes in the weight room twice a week, you damn well better make sure that what you're doing in the, that 30 minutes is high quality focused work. And I lost count. <laughs> Goes to show how focused I am. I'm pretty sure that's seven. And this is eight. Perfect. Okay, let's put that weight down. We're gonna do the dumbbell bent over row. This is going to work our core but also our latissimus dorsi. So the big muscles in your back, your rhomboids, your, your traps, all that stuff is gonna get worked as well. And you'll probably feel it in your glutes and hamstrings, especially if you're really tight in the hamstrings because of the position you need to hold your body in. You need a really good solid foot placement. And then you're going to bend forward and bend your knees a little bit. And then your hands are here, but they're not like, it's not like this. You have to set, okay, get my spine in a neutral position. Tuck my pelvis a little bit to get neutral. And from here, I pull like this. Now I'm rowing, okay, dumbbell row, bent over dumbbell row. This is fantastic for roadies. We spend a lot of time in this position. You need a strong back to be able to help with that whole positioning like this. You need to be 360 strong, okay? So this exercise is excellent for this position. So you're going to, again, dip, bend, hinge, Brace, set, and then row. We're doing 12 reps, three sets. Here we go. One, give the back a squeeze when you pull. Two, three, breathe out when you pull, breathe in when you lower. Four, and make sure when you lower, you do not lose five, that neutral position. Six, seven, Eight, really focus on the back. Nine, 10, 11, 12. Relax. You don't have to hold at all if you don't want to. I hold because I like to squeeze the muscles I'm focusing on. If you're a beginner, I don't suggest holding that long. If you're like me, then give her a good old squeeze. Let's do another set. Here we go. Assume that position nice and strong. You should have weight through the whole foot placement, but you may want to shift a little bit into your heels. Feel your glutes working, your hamstrings, everything. Set those shoulders and let's row. Here we go. One, two, keep your neck in line with your spine as well. Three, so it's not like hanging off like this. Four, keep it neutral. Five, six, roll back towards your hip. Seven, keeping it low. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. Relax. There are other types of rows. You can do a mid row, or you can do a yeah, mid row, or you can even do a high row. So you target the different areas in your back. You can do underhand, overhand. We're doing palms facing each other. So there's all different kinds of different positioning you can play around with. That's one way you can mix this up as well. One more set and then we stretch. Let's do this. Hinge, bend the knees, check your feet placement and pressure, neck in line with spine, set the shoulders, of course, brace the core the whole way around the spine, and here we go. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's it. Awesome. Now you can put those weights down. Okay, that's it. That's it for the exercises we're going to stretch. So let's get down on the ground and have a little stretchy poo. <laughs> okay, so let's do, uh, let's, we're going to do whole body, head to toe, all the major muscle groups. So we'll start with our hamstrings and you can just tuck one leg in and reach down and take some nice big deep belly breaths. I hope you enjoyed this routine today and you find it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. Also, I did do a live video on this workout, a tutorial, a couple weeks back. So you can get even more explanations than what I gave you today in that video if you like that kind of stuff. I will link it in the description below. <laughs> I'm such a talker. Okay, switch to the other side. It's because I'm an, a teacher by heart. I am definitely a teacher by heart, by nature. And that's why I have an education school where I certify trainers. Because <laughs> I just love this stuff. There's always something to learn. All right, let's give those quads and hip flexors a stretch. So we will uh, pull our leg like this and then we'll come up into this position. You don't have to come in this position if it's uncomfortable. You can stay the, on your bum. Now, give your bum a squeeze and your belly, and you'll notice that you'll get more of a stretch in your quad and you keep it out of your back. Also in your hip flexor. Depends on how tight you are. I have extremely tight quads. <laughs> so I'm, I stretch them every day. Um, if I didn't, I can't imagine what they would be at. But they've been like that all my life. It's just genetic makeup and the way I, I move every day. Okay. My habits. Let's switch to the other side. I'm very quad focused. I wish I was more glute focused. I am working on trying to shift, share the load more between my glutes and quads. Awesome. Okay. Now let's take those legs out, put, go in this position so you cross one leg over the other, and then give it a hug and twist. And uh, you want to focus in the glutes, feeling that stretch in your glutes. So you can move around. I like to shift a little bit, see where if I can, and I pull on my leg a bit just to see how far I can, so I can get that feeling, that stretchy feeling. I want it to be comfortable and not painful, but I need to be able to feel it. Okay, and switch to the other side. You should hold these stretches for about 20 seconds minimum. You can do it in five second increments or um, about three really big deep breaths. This is about 15 to 20 seconds. So this stretch gives you a little bit of a twist as well. So you get that upper body as well. Okay, so we have our lower body. Now let's stretch out our shoulders a bit. Good old fashioned shoulder uh, stretch never goes out of style. <laughs> and let's stretch our triceps. So over the head and you wanna reach down your back, try to keep the pressure off your head so you're not pushing on your neck. Big deep breath. Always breathe nice and deep into your belly when you're stretching. Relax. Now the other side, let's do the shoulder first. This 
So today's workout gave you a warm up and cool down in addition to five really good exercises that are focused on the core. And once you get to know the routine, you can start playing around. Okay, stretch your triceps, mixing it up, different intensities. And relax okay let's put our hands on our knees and we're just gonna round our back and now we're gonna like slouch so we can stretch out our back and drop your chin another thing too if you use this video more often is once you get to he you hear I know I realize my users hear me say the same thing over and over and over again <laughs> however you can do extra work while I'm chatting <laughs> okay, let's bring our hands out and we're going to stretch our chest. So we're going to bring our hands around, lace our fingers, push them to the ground, and then just externally rotate their shoulders and just really open up the chest. All right, put your hand on the ground and then you're just gonna reach over your head. Oh, that side body. Feels good, doesn't it? The thing about stretching is if you don't do it on a regular basis, just the same as weight training, just the same as road cycling, you want to get better at road cycling, what do you do? You ride your bike more. You want to get better at stretching and increase your flexibility, guess what? You have to do it more. And you have to do it, in my opinion, every day or at least, you know, five to six days a week. You want to take a day off, okay. But really, stretching is something, if you're trying to increase the flexibility in a certain area, you have to practice it on a daily basis, pretty much. You gotta be adamant about it. You can't just stretch once a week and expect that to pay off. It's not gonna work. <laughs> Same with this routine. If you're just gonna do this routine occasionally or randomly, it's not gonna give you any benefit. You have to take this routine and you have to put it into your training schedule a minimum of once a week, ideally twice a week. And if you have time, if you're not riding a whole lot, right now then definitely put it in three times a week but for me it's two times a week during my season that i strength train and you have to be consistent with it every week once in a while you're traveling and things like that and you can't get to the gym that's okay if skipping out on your strength work and you're expecting to get benefits from it you're living in la la land <laughs> so make sure you're consistent with these types of routines, just the same as you are with your road cycling, okay? So if you're, if you're training and you wanna see improvements, so you can't get improvements if you don't practice. All right, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you liked this video and this workout, and please give me feedback in the comments section below, what you think, what you would like to see, any ways I can improve these workouts for you, what you would, um, if there's an area that you would like, you know, a video that you would like me to do on, you know, something specific towards your sport, just let me know, or strength training, or whatever in general, just let me know. All right, have a fantastic day. Bye for now.